OK, so it is now recording. OK, so uh, welcome to the second talk um, about A-level physics um, at St uh, Ambrose on our online open evening. So presumably you're in the right place. You um, have an interest in studying physics um, at A-level. Um, or you're just curious about why you might want to. OK, so maybe you're not quite sure. So what I'm going to do over the next few minutes is try and give you some uh, reasons that you might want to study physics, some things to think about. And then I'm briefly, uh, because it's all out there in the prospectus or on the uh, various exam board websites, I'll go a little bit over the requirements and structure towards the end, but most of it is uh, talking about reasons why you might be considering physics. OK. Now, the first reason, which I think is the most important, is because you enjoy it, because you find it interesting, because you find it uh, challenges you uh, or challenges the way you think. Um, and especially, obviously, if you've enjoyed it at GCSE, whether you've done separate or combined, and you want to go further into the subject. So obviously um, at A level, we go into um, a much greater level of detail. We do go back over topics you've studied before, but as I say, in more depth, but we also do study areas that we never have uh, considered at GCSE. So there is a mixture of new and old, but all to a much greater depth than you will have done before. And also physics, we're trying to explain or trying to investigate, understand how our universe works when you actually get down to it. And you can't really get a, a bigger question than that. Not saying we'll get the answer, but we'll, uh, we'll certainly try our best and uh, see what we learn along the way. Physics is a practical subject. Um, you will do a lot of practical work, including what we call the PAGs, which um, are required practical experiments, but not in the sense that you have to learn them. So OCR is different to AQA in that sense. You do the PAGs more for the skills, so for the practical skills, such so sort as of planning, uh, analysing, evaluating experiments, rather than learning just a set method. So you do these as practicals um, across the two years, and they will give you a pass or a fail in what we call the practical component. Uh, and if you do them as instructed, as uh, written or verbal instructions, you will pass. OK. And that is important for some university um, degrees. But as well as that, there is a component in each exam of up to about 15 percent, which relates to the practical work. Again, these skills rather than learning practicals themselves. So it's to make sure you've got uh, the basic experimental skills you might need for a subject like engineering or medicine or similar at university or science itself. OK. So obviously we're starting to think about the future. And you might have a vague idea of which direction you want to go, but you might not have a particularly fixed idea. You might want to keep your options open and physics is one of the best A levels, in my opinion, for that. It keeps doors open, OK? And you'll be surprised just where you might find a physicist. We're all over the place. We're not just in science and engineering, uh, increasingly in areas like computer science, but even things like business and economics. There's lots of physicists working in the city of London, in government, um, all sorts of careers. Like physicists, basically because if you have an A-level or a further qualification in physics, you will have developed a number of very desirable skills, analytical, logical, numerate skills, OK? So tying into this is obviously for certain um, career pathways, you will be required to study physics. Now, what I will say at this point is I go back to my first main slide. Remember, you must enjoy what you are doing. It's really important. 
If you think that you want to do a course and you have to do A-level physics, but you don't particularly like it, it's probably not a good course for you in the long run. OK, so just bear that in mind. But things like architecture, um, increasingly medicine, very desirable these days, physics, you might be surprised, but all the technology, etc., it's coming into medicine. I've said computer science, but even things like um, law and economics uh, and similar, because again, having studied physics, you've shown you have a certain set of skills. And I've just got a, a little quote from a, a, PC, a PwC report, a little bit old now, but still over the course of um, your career, having a physics degree, for instance, um, will boost your average life earnings if, if you want to boil it down to that. <laughs> Another reason for looking at physics is because it fits in with your other subjects. OK, a lot of students take physics uh, to complement um, another science, so particularly the old uh, traditional combination of maths, physics, chemistry um, is still going strong. Um, increasingly these days you get people doing things like IT with physics and maths, computer science, um, but also things like DT and physics um, is another way into things like architecture and civil engineering. And quite often, even if you have no intention of doing a physics or direct engineering degree, a physics A-level is seen very much as an enabling A-level. If you get a decent grade in A-level physics, it can actually help boost your application for a non-physics um, type course. So quite a few things to think about there. I think this one is one we don't talk about enough, really, um, to be challenged. It's not an easy subject. Um, it pushes you. It pushes um, your ability, your problem solving skills. Um, but it's very rewarding that sometimes. If you can overcome a difficult challenge, a difficult subject and get that eureka moment, that can be uh, very, very satisfying. And also along the way, you will be developing these skills that you can apply across subjects and across fields and things. So sometimes it is good to find it difficult. OK, so let's briefly talk about requirements. You must get at least grade seven in uh, physics, whether that's um, separate or combined. We strongly suggest you get at least a grade seven in maths. And of course, if the higher the grades you get in these two subjects, the better generally, uh, and the, the, the better outcomes you're more likely to get. But this also ties into this next uh, point, number three, be prepared to work hard. It's a tricky subject, you will be challenged, you must hit the ground running. And you must accept that sometimes you will struggle to understand things straight away, and that's not a bad thing. All in all, it encourages you to work that little bit harder outside of lessons, doing your own research, doing your own reading. There's so much uh, information out there now. It's brilliant. And this independent work is excellent preparation for your future as well, especially if you're thinking about university. And of course, if you're not sure, if you want any advice, you can always talk to your physics teacher um, or, sorry, if you're a parent or guardian, you can contact your physics, your son's physics teacher or myself, and we are very happy to talk about our subject because we love physics. We really do. Um, we've got three um, physics staff in school, three physics teachers, all of whom have some form of postgraduate qualification in physics, all in different areas, and we are very, very enthusiastic for our subject. So we will talk to you and give you our advice. Um, I've put it up for now. If you want to look it up, OCR Physics A. Generally, the content three and four is year 12, the content five and six is year 13. Then modules one and two are basic skills that underpin everything. I've got a little bit here about the um, assessment at the end, plus the practical components I talked about earlier. But this is all available on the OCR website. As I say, just search for OCR Physics A. Support, we uh, subscribe to Caboodle. 
So we, that's a full digital online textbook plus further resources produced by the OCR. As I've just mentioned, we have three specialist physicists as teachers, which is quite rare um, in, in state schools, um, especially with our further experience. Um, all of us came into teaching after being uh, professional physicists in one way or another. We also will support you if you are thinking of applying to uh, Oxbridge or the top Russell Group uh, universities. We've got quite a bit of experience with that. Um, and even just giving you general course advice, setting up mock interviews, and of course, helping you prepare for all your exams in all their different forms. So there's a couple of minutes left. Um, I will open the chat box, or if you want to be enabled as a presenter, if you can let me know. Um, but honestly, um, if you're a student, come and talk to us. If you are a parent or guardian, please feel free. Um, my staff uh, email is on screen, or you can contact Dr. Say or Mrs. Mansour as well. OK, so thank you very much for listening. I'm going to stop, if I can, the recording now.